Look, look, hear me out. Before you skip, so you can get straight to the birth plan, because I know you don't see one right now. Before you skip forward, please hear me out. I've been trying to find this movie scene for a month. If one of my 30 subscribers know what movie it is or show, please let me know. Um, Cause maybe I'll clip it in in the future. But there, the scene is, there's a pregnant lady sitting down and it's a group of friends. And then there's a um, woman standing up with blonde hair and a bob. Person who's pregnant is like sitting down and they're talking about a birth plan. And then the woman who's standing up with blonde hair says, you don't have a birth plan? I'm not even pregnant and I have a birth plan. And when I saw that scene, I knew right then and there. I knew right then and there that scene is going to be in my birth plan video on YouTube. Please. But it's relevant. I'm sorry to tell because, you. Because, baby, you need a birth plan. And I understand. Pay attention to the word plan. Because it is just a plan, right? We have plans for our life. We plan to do this. We plan to do that. Do that. And I can understand the point of view that I feel like is that stems from hurt or pain of I don't want to plan something because that plan may not work out but that's the the whole point of me trying to stay focused on the word plan is because a plan is exactly that it's a plan it's not a guarantee I don't see the word plan as a guarantee when I use the word plan it's because it's an idea that I have it's something that I I may be working towards but that doesn't mean it's a guarantee because sometimes there are things not in our control but I just want to let you know a birth plan is is great because when you have a goal it can help you do the things that it takes to get to that goal and I understand when it comes to children some beautiful children do not make it long after they're born some beautiful children do not make it um, to be alive by the time they're born um, and that is a tough situation to be in and um, so I, I can see that being a part in it so sometimes you know we have these plans and things don't work out but I do think it can be beneficial to have a plan um, because imagine things are working out and you don't even have a backup plan or you don't even know anything about what's happening because you didn't have a plan oh the, the the doctors are just automatically doing all these other things and you you have nothing you know nothing about it because you didn't care to look into it you didn't care to make the plan so I just feel like it'd be beneficial to make a birth plan um have an idea of what you want and also doula save lives really birth plan can save lives all of those knowledge can save lives sometimes it, there are times you speak up and had you not spoken up things didn't work out i've had my own, own experience when i've seen um a provider tell a mom that she was proud for speaking up for herself when it came to something that even the provider was telling her something else about I, I probably worded that wrong but even when the provider was saying the opposite like come on now um it is okay if things change sometimes circumstances change some things in the birth plan may be ideal if you aren't high risk so i just wanted to give that disclaimer because you know me i'm always giving disclaimers Whew. Should have caught me a couple days ago. I've been sweating the last three days. So I'm going to go over my birth plan. This video is not for necessarily to help create yours. I mean, it could help you create yours, but I'm not making it coming from a doula trainee perspective or a doula perspective. This is just me showing you what my birth plan was and i have not looked at this birth plan since probably before the since the day i gave birth yeah that sounds about right or a little after when i just like looked at it to put it away so let's go over it and maybe my thought process too when writing this i can't remember where i got the birth plan from i Maybe one day I'll have my own made by me. So for my birth plan, I put a few of my 
health history, um, and then my breath preferences, vaginal. I was interested in a water birth. Some of this stuff took time because there were things I wanted to research before coming with a final decision. So I wanted to do a water birth, but I also wanted to have, I also wanted to be at a hospital for my first birth or even a birth center, but I hadn't really looked into the birth center I heard about near my area. So maybe if I did, then I would consider water birth. Um, there are different things to consider um, if you do want to have a water birth. I'm not going to get into that. But long story short, I chose vaginal. Um, and I have positions I wanted to try. I checkmarked all of them because I want to try all of them. I don't see why, why not. Um, unless I was on epidural, I don't see why the, like the hospital may not let me try different positions it could really be helpful if i'm able to walk around so i check mark all of them because i wanted to try all of them and be willing to try all of them now in labor at some point when the, with the contractions i'm like i wish i could just find one good spot <laughs> but and leave it at that i just knew there was one spot i hated and that was trying to lay down to get rest I hated that, but the contractions felt the worst with that. But I wanted to lay down, which eventually I was able to. So, props I had on here yoga ball, rebozo, squat bar, peanut bar, the shower. I didn't quite put that there. I can't remember why. Um, because technically, I probably would have been able to where I birth. Um, it was like a tub, but you know, it's a shower too. So, I just didn't mark it. Um, but props I would like to have. These are also things I checked with the hospital I was birthing at to see if they had. Um, I can't remember if they had the rebozo, but it's still a prop that I think I wanted to have. But also, that would have been not for me to do. So, during labor, fetal monitoring. Um, I had. I think I put continuous. Because I'm like, okay, I do want them to monitor. Um, I think, I can't remember. I have it crossed off. But I remember, like, different thought processes. And when I learned, like, okay, there are different ways to monitor the baby. Um, so then I just specified wireless unit. Um, I do not want an internal fetal monitor. Because that requires, like, um, they have to puncture like the baby's head that might not be the best way to say it but uh i might put a picture up here so i just wanted a wireless unit or something that was safe didn't have to harm the baby i got pain medication and see even in the pain medication i put i'll decide as my labor progresses um i didn't check mark please don't offer me any um even though I didn't want, like, don't offer me any. I'll just make the decision. But I had that in there. So I'm like, I'll just see where I am. And then the PCIotomy. I absolutely did not want that. And I would say for anybody, I feel like it's better to tear naturally than be cut. Because don't even need to be cut. I'd rather just tear. Um, and then in case of C-section I had in here, like I wanted to take an opinion, my support person to remain with me the entire time. And I have heard in the emergency C-section, um, it may, t the reason why the support person may not be able to be there is because if too much is happening too fast, then they can't get dressed in enough time. That's something I would definitely, uh, double check though. But I did have it here. I want my support person to be there the entire time. We can get into the C-section later because I did create like a little birth plan for that. Oh, while being, I definitely wanted to with the baby being delivered. I had put, I wanted to help catch the baby. But also, um, I had in my head that my sister, could, who was also my doula, sister slash doula, could also catch my son. 
didn't really respond to like avoid forceps even though I definitely would have wanted to avoid any intervention other than just me naturally pushing my baby me and my baby knowing what to do with our bodies so I didn't check mark it but I would have wanted to avoid forceps I really wasn't worried about a mirror and I did touch the head as it crowned that's not something I had in my birth plan but I did do it and avoid vacuum extraction I definitely didn't want to vacuum that ties into letting my body and my baby do what we are made to do and oh so I, I forgot that I wrote something on the back of this sheet too and so on the back of here I had dim lights I had I want dim lights in the room uh, for pain relief I wanted to try essential oils massage hydrotherapy um i did labor and water for a little bit um i wanted nitrous oxide and a massage gun and <laughs> the massage gun actually ended up making my contractions feel worse um and it was so funny because i was so excited to bring that it it didn't do what i was hoping it did and then the nitrous oxide y'all i got played one not my regular midwife um i didn't talk to my regular midwife about it i ended up having one appointment with the regular doctor and that's who told me um nitrous oxide was available at the hospital just to find out when i did when it when i did want pain relief nope no no nitrous oxide so i was hurt i was a little hurt um what happens if I need a C-section? So I have this because I wanted to know what I can prepare for with a C-section. Not even necessarily postpartum care, but even like um, reading somewhere about when the baby comes out vaginally. Um, it The baby coming out vaginally helps with the pressure helps um, clear the lungs. And when you have a C-section, that doesn't happen because the baby didn't come out vaginally. So looking into different methods to help with that. So that's why I had like my own little paperwork for that. This might, I'm not going to fully read this, but I had like a whole PDF. Okay, after delivery. So I wrote Lotus Birth because that was one of the things I was considering. I end up not going with the Lotus Birth. And I chose to uh, do delayed cord clamping and take my placenta home. Um, and there's different things to consider with that. But that's just what I ended up doing. Because you got to think with the lotus birth. If you have the lotus birth, you won't be eating your placenta. So it was just different things I had to consider. And I think I decided what I was going to do probably in like the last three, four weeks. And so... Of course, I put take my placenta home with me. Either way, it was going. That placenta was going home with me. That's my organ. Me and my babies. Um, what me and my baby created. I definitely put golden hour in breastfeed because I wanted to have a golden hour. Anything that needed to be done with the baby, if baby's healthy, and there's no emergency, there's no need to take baby. Skin to skin can help regulate me and baby. So definitely wanted to do that um plan on feeding with breast milk yep don't even offer formula don't even nope 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 my baby knows how much they need to eat my body was made to do this and boom that's all i need to know for me once i learned that breast milk was better that's all all i needed to know it wasn't like it was better and expensive it's better and natural um oh i had in here have do to clear the nose via and i didn't finish explaining but i wanted the i i, I looked into well uh my doula slash my sister was i think we had a conversation about like so you don't have to do like the suction cup like another method uh behind clearing baby's nose i'm not gonna go into depth because i'm not too familiar with it now but it was a discussion me and my doula slash sister had so I did write it down and for bath I put baby bath after I decide 
I didn't want them to give the baby a bath when the baby was first born. I didn't want them to do it 24 hours later. I didn't want them to really wipe, wipe the vernix coating off. I wanted to rub the vernix coating in. And support person and I do it together. I wanted to do the bath myself with my support person or my partner at the time. Well, my child's father. Because really, I'm like, I can do the bath at home. I did have like one of the nurses like teach me because I'm like okay can you just teach me like how we protect the umbilical cord like how that works um so I did end up doing a bath with no soap because I didn't bring my own soap I did because I wasn't planning on giving baby a bath at the hospital so we did a water bath which I was fine with um because I didn't want to do anything else and that was maybe the night before we left or the day before we left or the day of um I definitely didn't do even just the water after 24 hours. I didn't do that. And so medications and interventions, um, that really did change around. So I put that I didn't want to do the eye ointment. I did ultimately decide to do the vitamin K shot and the hepatitis B shot after looking into it. Um, I did not want to do the uh, pacifier. And then as you see with the eye ointment, I didn't put no or yes. Um, so... I feel like it really depends. It's not necessarily needed. And then I got different um, birthing positions just to have on my roster. I kept that. And I've got within the different birthing positions I just had on my roster to try. I also got like affirmations. I think I ended up taking my affirmation cards anyway. But I just... I mean, it came with it, so I printed it out anyway. I added a few extra good things to say. These were some of the things I had to tell myself. I have all the strength I need. I can breathe and ride through the waves. You can see I crossed off contractions because I didn't want to associate contraction. I didn't want to think about the pain that I hear so much when we talk about contractions. And my favorite thing is each surge of my body means I meet them sooner. Oh, right. So the back of it. So for the C-section part, what I did was, what, I don't know what first primary C-section, why that's marked off, but other health conditions that's on there. Um, I put medications I would be okay with. Um, I would like my arms to be kept free. Surgical drape. Yes, I wanted the uh, cape, the drape up, and excuse my handwriting, but I did want the drape because I just felt like I wouldn't have been comfortable seeing everything happening, especially after watching the video. Like I'm like, no, oh, that makes me a little uncomfortable. But I definitely wanted my support person to see that, which. At the time, of course, I'm like, I don't really, I didn't really know who my support person would be. I didn't know if it would be my sister or uh, my child's father. But based off discussion leading up to this, my sister would have been um, comfortable with being there um, as opposed to other people um, because other people weren't necessarily comfortable with seeing it. So uh, my sister more than likely would have been in the room. Um, with me during that which i also had in here explain surgery to support person as it's happening because that was another big piece for me i want them to at least know what's going on especially if i'm like doozy and then of course after delivery i got placenta because whichever way baby was coming out i'm taking my placenta home and I want skin to skin immediately. And if I am in a bad position where I can't do skin to skin, then I need my support person or my child's father to do skin to skin. To skin. And then I got in here, I prefer skin to be closed with skin glue or I clearly didn't even check mark it. But so this is probably like half finished. Um, plan a feed baby with breast milk, of course, same thing. Please do not give my baby, um, I didn't even check mark that, but sugar water. Why did I put sugar water on here? I think I saw that on another C-section birth plan 
is sugar water. So I didn't, of course, I don't want my baby to have sugar water. And then other requests I had, just random, I have all procedures and medications given to my baby to be explained before. Do not do anything to my child until you talk to me. And then I have, I would like to give my baby, will talk to me or somebody else. I would like to give my baby their first bath or support person at home. So that's similar to what I had before. I wanted to give my baby the first bath. And then I've got post C-section. I put fluids of baby that are replaced naturally through birth canal. I mean fluids of baby that are released naturally through birth canal. So I think that was referring to what I was talking about earlier where I said vaginally it's when the baby comes out and his wings squeeze some of those fluids come out and so I was just I wrote that in here so that I could get handled how I needed to and then yep I've got doula help clear passages so I had that in the other uh regular plan so this is my plan my birth plan it was not the neatest and of course after you saw my handwriting it definitely wasn't the neatest but this is what I had to prepare for birth. This is something that took a little bit long to complete. And as you see, even the C-section thing wasn't complete. But sometimes you learn things later on. You change your mind. But this is what made me feel safe and helped make my voice feel heard when sharing this birth plan with my provider. And having it at the hospital with me and sharing it with my doula. Um, so she had it and if you are interested in seeing more videos related to parenthood birth the birth world whatever it is subscribe like um, I have different types of videos my personal life just different things just check it out and you'll see you in the